Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, we will take a look at how we can take screenshots when a test fails so that we can quickly take a look at the screenshot and identify what was the state of our application at that moment. We will also learn how to take screenshots whenever we want for a certain part of the screen and these screenshots can then be reviewed by our team for manual validation if needed. So before we get started, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content and you'd like to support my work. Alright, so let's get started now. So I'm here on my contact test and if you remember from the previous video, contact test basically all it does is it goes to the contact form which is practice automation bro slash contact then it fills all the fields over here which is the form field and then it clicks the submit button. After that it makes sure that this text gets back after the text successfully passed. This is a really simple test that we created in an earlier part of the videos. Now this is what we're going to do. So we're going to run our test and we're going to change our session to make a test fail on purpose. For example, what I can do is maybe instead of doing thanks for contacting us, I can just get rid of this and just do it thanks for us. We will be in touch with you shortly. Now we know when we will be running this test, this test will fail. So that's good because when a test fails, we want it to take screenshot. So I will show you how the screenshots work when we will be using this linear based framework. Now you have to pay attention here because this one is a little bit tricky so that you understand how this is actually working. So let's run this test and then we will show you how we can take screenshots. So to run the test, I'm simply going to run the pytest command. I'm going to do dash k and then type in test underscore contact so that it runs our contact test over here. Then I'm going to hit enter. Now if you're thinking, hey, wait, you haven't really added any mechanism to take screenshot at the moment. Well, yes, I know. So let's run this test just to show you what happens when a test fails. And then we'll take a look at the screenshot part later on. Okay, so let me move this up. And as you can see, our test failed. And over here, it's saying that the element was not visible. Well, technically that's not really fully true. The element was visible except the text that we were trying to assert, which was this particular thing. So it's saying the expected text, which this particular thing was not visible after six seconds. Okay, so this is good. Our test failed as expected. Now we wanted to take screenshot, right? So how would that work? Remember when I told you that this is a little bit tricky with Selenium base? Well, here's the thing. Let me show you how this works. So I'm simply going to go to this latest logs here. I'm going to open this folder. Now, as you can see, this folder got generated here and this is the exact test name here. So test underscore contact page. And here I see three files. I have a .txt file, I have a .html file and I have a .png file. So let's open up the .txt first of all. The moment I open this up, you can see over here it's telling me, all right, what was the page that I was working on? That was the contact page. What was the browser? I was using Chrome, my timestamp. So what exactly was the time when I was running this? And then you can also see that, hey, that this particular line, line 20 on the test contact page actually failed. And all can also see the exception that was raised. So this is the same exception that we were seeing in our console as well. So this is really good because now this file automatically got generated for us. Now it's totally up to you if you want to take advantage of this file. Maybe you can take this and parse it if you want, or you can just keep it this way and you can save it in your artifact, in your CI CD pipeline, and then you can review that later on as needed. So let's take a look at the next file now. So the next file we have is this page underscore source.html. Now if I open this up, let's see what, what's there. So over here we have the entire HTML or basically the entire DOM of that particular time when our test actually failed. So if I open this up in Chrome, so I can click on Chrome here to open this up and let me move this over here. Okay, so as you can see, this particular screen got opened up. Now this is the exact point of time when our test actually failed. So here they were trying to do the validation. So this was thanks for contacting us and we got rid of this contacting word from there. So it's actually telling me, okay, this was how your screen looked at that point. Now remember, this is not a screenshot. This is the actual DOM. So basically it copied the entire DOM and it pasted it as this .html file so that we can review what exactly was the state of our test or our state of our um, page at that point. And then we can basically do our debugging from there on. So this is really powerful. Now we are doing all of this without actually any configuration. So this is inbuilt as part of Selenium based framework. Now that's the reason I really love this framework a lot because it does all the heavy lifting for you. All you have to do is basically go in there and write your test as clean as possible. Now the next thing we have is the screenshot.png. Now there you go. This is also taking the screenshot of that particular uh, page or basically the, that part of that screen at that moment when our test failed. So remember when I was telling you that it's a little bit tricky to take screenshot with Selenium based framework? Well, it's actually not. I was just joking because it's really straightforward to do this. And honestly, it's so straightforward. It seems too good to be true because they're doing everything for you. And all you have to do is once again, just write your test and that's it. 
they are t giving you the entire trace logs over here in the .txt file. They're giving the entire uh, page source for that particular page. And they're also taking screenshot for you. That's it. That's how simple it is to take screenshot with Selenium based framework. There's nothing that you have to do over here. Now, all of these logs get generated under the latest underscore logs. Then it will create a new folder for you. So let's say if your multiple tests are failing, it will create multiple folders and you're going to see this particular files for those particular folders as well. Now, every time you run this, it will go ahead and delete everything that's part of the latest underscore logs. But if you want to, let's say not delete this, you can still save them under archive logs there as well. Now, let's say if you're running it on your CICD, you can also art just save it as your artifacts and then you can review them later on whenever needed. All right, so now let's take a look at our next scenario, which is how to take screenshots whenever we want, because at the moment it's taking screenshot when a test fails. And while that is good and it's great for debugging and everything, what we want is maybe there's a scenario where you want to take screenshots for a particular part of your page whenever you're running your test. Now those screenshots can then be later on reviewed by our um, team members so that they can know what was exactly happening when you ran the test, what was the state of the application, and they might want to just do a quick validation of that as well. So to do that, what we will do is take a screenshot before our form gets filled. So what I can do is over here, we are filling in all our forms. So let's say if you want to make sure how does your form looks when it's empty and then how does your form look when it's actually filled out. So let's take a look at that and how we can do it. So here, what I will do is to fill in all the fields right over here before this, I'm going to take a screenshot. Now, one thing to remember is when we open up the page, it has to scroll down to go in and actually fill all of these fields. So I'm going to implement the scrolling feature first so that it goes to the form and then it takes a screenshot because if I say, Hey, take the screenshot right now, it's just going to take the screenshot at the very top of the page where we don't even have the form. So there's a little bit of trick that we need to implement over here. So what I will do is add in a new comment, say scroll to the uh, form. And then I want you to take screenshot or basically scroll to the empty form. Now to scroll it, I'm just going to scroll over to my form. So I will do self dot scroll to. And here I'm going to add in the form um, element. So the form element already copied. It's an ID, which I will just paste in here. And then I want it to take screenshot. Now this one is really, really easy. All I will do is solve dot save screenshot. And this takes in a name and a folder. The name of the screenshot. So here I'm going to say this is my empty contact form. And then I wanted to say, where does it needs to store? So I'm going to say, hey, just store it under the uh, let's say a new folder so I can call this new folder custom screenshots. You can name this anything you want, but I'm just going to name it custom screenshot. So we will run the test. It will take a screenshot and it will name it empty contact form and then it will save it under this custom screenshots folder. Now let's do the same thing when the form is actually filled. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. And then I'm going to paste it here. So I'm going to do it before I actually submit the form. So this time I don't really need to scroll, right? All we're doing is take screenshot. When the form is filled. And then I will remove the scroll to here. And then instead of doing empty contact form, I will change this to filled contact form. And then we're going to store it the same place, which is custom underscore screenshots. Okay. So now let's run the test to see if it will store our screenshots. So I'm going to run this test the same way, which is our Python dash K test contact. But one thing I will do is fix our failure over here. So I'm going to change this to contact us again. Or what was it? It was contacting us. Yeah. Thanks for contacting us. And then everything else will remain the same. Okay. So let me run this and see if this works. All right. So we ran our test and it successfully passed. We can see one passed over here. And one thing to notice it, we have a new folder, which is custom underscore screenshot. And that's exactly what we named it here. If I open that up, I have two screenshots here, empty contact form and filled contact form, which is amazing because this is exactly what we did over here. So let's open up the first one. There you go. We can see the state of our empty contact form, which looks like this. And if I open up the next one and we see the state of our filled contact form. Now this one, I kind of assume because what it did was by the time it came down, it was actually only taking the screenshot of this particular part. What we can do is fix it again by scrolling it back up, which is scroll it over here and then take a screenshot again so that we can see the proper screenshot of that full form instead. And that's fine. I'm just going to leave that to up to you guys if you want to try it out. But I think for now you guys understand how this works. So this is how you can take a custom screenshots of a particular element of your screen. And also you also learned how you can take screenshots when a test fails. Now that's another reason guys you should use frameworks like Selenium base because they have so much pre-baked functionalities already for you. So instead of doing this the old way we are using your Selenium web driver and then basically doing it from Python everything from scratch. 
where you're going in and implementing all these functionalities or maybe finding plugins to actually do this for you. Instead, you can just simply use this framework and there you go. They're doing everything for you. That's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. Also, leave a comment below if you have any questions related to this video or if there's some other topics you would like me to create content on as well. That's all for now, guys. I will see you all in the next one.